Hey there and good afternoon. Gosh, we have a good one for you today. Uh, hopefully you joined us yesterday for the LinkedIn lecture. Today is really part two to the LinkedIn lecture. Um, if you missed yesterday's lecture, of course, it's available uh, on my YouTube channel, my Facebook page. Also, a special version of it is right on my homepage, selfrecruiter.com, about halfway down the page. You know, the difference with that one is you can see me, see the slides, see me large, see the slides large. For that one, you can use it as a really great start and stop tutorial. Now, today is going to be part two. Let's just get to up on screen here and share a little bit. Ah, there we go, welcome. You know, this is about taking back control, uh, the whole series. Uh, today, we're gonna think about how we can begin to manage perception once we have a LinkedIn profile. So this isn't about building the right LinkedIn profile. That's actually yesterday's lecture right over my YouTube channel, Self Recruiter, just check that out. But once you've built out a great story, a great home for your, for your career narrative on LinkedIn, that's the same thing as putting together a really great brochure that's sitting over in the corner on some dusty rack because no one's looking at it. You have to get that profile in front of people. And for that, you need a social media marketing campaign. Now, that usually scares people like, oh, social media marketing campaign. I don't know, oh, I don't know what that is. Well, yeah, it's gonna require about two hours of homework and we're gonna take you through all of that here uh, in, in the next about 40 minutes. And then it, once you do the homework, which is a one time two hours, you then spend just two minutes per day. Two minutes per day, you can run an effective social media marketing campaign, either to control the perception in your job search or the same thing when you're uh, contributing in your career, but you wanna elevate that brand. So let, let's see how we can use this really to push things forward. Uh, subtitle of this might, might be, now that I have a great LinkedIn profile, what do I do with it? <laughs> you know, most people get there and they feel like everyone said I had to be here, but but now what? Really, it's about how you take control of your career story and how you manage the, the messaging for that. In case you haven't seen me before, John Krantz, author, career coach, and speaker, uh, resume and LinkedIn guru also. So if you need help elevating your brand and your story across your resume, your LinkedIn profile, or in your interview discussions, or, or even in your outreach messaging, don't hesitate to reach out. All my services are under my services tab over on the Self Recruiter website. And uh, if you need to talk before you figure out which package is really the right one for you, just send me a quick email by direct email and we'll set up a time to speak. Now, as we jump in, a few other resources that'll help you over on my LinkedIn, you can get to a few different articles that will help you avoid big mistakes or how to supercharge your job search or how to make sure your resume does not become resume roadkill. Here's a two minute little intro. I'm gonna bring it center stage and then we'll come right back. I'm John Krant author, career coach, and speaker. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about using LinkedIn and getting the best out of social media marketing. Your business is built on perception. Perception of the products or the services or, or of your reputation. Business today is judged by web presence, not, not just a business's website. In our traditional work life, we didn't hesitate to network with the right people when an opportunity arose. That chance to meet the right people that could help our career. But as a small business owner, sometimes it's all you. It becomes easy for us to prioritize networking away. Oh, not today. Until it's never on today's list. We have so many other hats to wear if we are to reach our dreams. And those other hats are certainly more important. More important. It's important for every small business person to network, to open doors that you may not have even imagined yet. You need to be reaching and communicating with current and potentially new customers or clients. You need to be out there contributing to the discussion about you. 
And with focus, it takes much less time than you really think to be effective. But you do have to take control. You have to develop your LinkedIn profile into a three-dimensional sales brochure, all about you, that naturally drives the reader to a singular conclusion. If I work with, hire, or buy from this person, it's the best business decision I'll make today. Then make use of social media marketing tools built into LinkedIn to be sowing your value across the network in updates and postings and other shares that influence the perception of you. Well, there's much more to share as we're just getting started. Now imagine that you have this great communication platform. By the way, that's your great LinkedIn profile that positions both you and your business professionally and effectively. And think about the effects of using and implementing a sharing on a schedule or editorial calendar to simplify your messaging. That's a powerful voice to be heard that affects perception. What would you want others to be thinking of when they are thinking of you? That's the important question. Oh my gosh. Um, don't get distracted because you heard the word business, your business. You know, that's a, that's a piece that I put together. Let me reposition my mic here. That's a piece I put together a few years ago for Goldman Sachs uh, 10,000 Small Businesses Program. But really, if you replace the word business with your career brand, because you have a career brand to manage forevermore, and the perception of that will determine what doors open for you and what doors do not. So think about that and think about all the things that we're going to cover a lot of those things today. So self recruiter, uh, the whole goal for the lecture series is teaching you how to take control in your job search, teaching you how to um, really move the obstacles out of your way by following certain rules that work for you and disregarding certain other rules that don't work for you because really those are meant for somebody else. Uh, the core of becoming a self recruiter is really networking in a very different way. And that's the LinkedIn lecture. So make sure you watch that. But also this concept of always keeping one eye on the toughest competitor imaginable. Those four, five, six people, <laughs> they'd scare you out of going after the job if you saw their resume. <laughs> They're going after, oh, forget it, forget it. That person. My gosh, you can beat those people so easily with a little bit of planning and strategy and everything else. But if you stick your head in the sand, they will beat you every single time because they're sparkly, shiny, distracting. But uh, they really do very little in the form of preparation because they already think they're perfect. <laughs> well, the secret to really refreshing your career story. Well, number one, you do have to build out a great story on your LinkedIn profile. If you have not done that yet, be sure to watch my building your professional network with LinkedIn and how to use it for your job search lecture that will get your LinkedIn profile itself up to speed. So it's a sharp selling tool. Then it's about putting together a very easy to manage digital self marketing campaign, really to, to market your career and to showcase your brilliance. This is how you take control of the discussion about you and how you create engagement, which is a lot closer to that kind of engagement than the mechanical type. Now, in terms of social media, yes, we're talking about LinkedIn today, but there are certainly other platforms. I use several platforms myself. I think most job seekers can use two or three fairly effectively. Uh, certainly in my view and everything I'm teaching you here today is my opinion. Should be taken with a grain of salt, maybe pitched over the shoulder for a little bit of luck. Um, LinkedIn, of course, that is the de facto social networking website for work life. But if you'd like to be hired, I'm a big believer that number two has to be Twitter. Almost lose it every time, every time I say that one. Uh, almost, almost lose my breakfast, lunch, whatever it might be. Um, I'm not talking about the 157 tweets over the weekend type thing. What I'm talking about is really never having to visit Twitter if you don't want to. That's more or less the way I use it. I visit it a few times a year. I connect it to my LinkedIn profile and then every single thing that I share, which is part of a social media marketing campaign on LinkedIn with one toggle, even on the free version of LinkedIn, I let it seamlessly flow out to Twitter, really doubling the marketing effect. And, and you can do the same thing. You have to think about what other platforms you might use. And there's an endless variety of platforms every day coming into the market. 
This is not about filling up your time doing social media marketing. Uh, you have a finite amount of time as a job seeker and you can do an effective job building and running a campaign with just two minutes of effort per day. So here's a piece I grabbed off of Facebook a couple of years ago, certainly didn't invent it and look how quickly social media goes out of date. Twitter, here I am eating a donut. Uh, uh, Facebook, I like donuts. Uh, Foursquare, who uses Foursquare anymore? Uh, Instagram, picture of a vintage donut. I don't think too many, many people are using uh, Instagram as, as, as vintage photos any longer. Lots of other uses though, including I use it myself, very important. Uh, YouTube, well, here I am actually eating a donut. LinkedIn, my, my skills, of course, include donut eating. Pinterest, here's a donut recipe. Of course, I don't think that Pinterest is really used that way any longer either. That's just the starter idea uh, that got Pinterest launched. And last FM, well, I don't know who's listening to that either. Your platforms evolve and live and die very quickly. Uh, you have to follow where you can do the most influence. Now, why are we here? Well, the people are, are, are there on social media. The connections are there. If you can get people to talk about you, it's like starting a wildfire in a, in a dry environment. Um, not very good for the environment, but very good for that fire to spread things. Uh, that's the effect of the positive shares. Look at that second from the bottom. Really, the effective use of social media, you can feel like you have almost no contact with these key people, and yet you're in their brain, you're in their circle, you're in the top of their mind, simply because you're constantly effectively sharing the right content. And we're going to tell you what that is. Now, social media profiles, that's not really the share piece, but each profile, each platform has its own profile. Oh, here's this platform. Here's that platform. Um, it's not about making them all identical to one another. You have to parse out your content and decide which content belongs here, which content belongs there, which content can go both places. And then you have to make sure the profiles support each other, but are not just simply duplicates of each other. And to think about this and to problem solve with it, you have to go back to the idea of why are you using this platform in the first place? Are, are your, are your, uh, you have, must have certain goals for this platform. And I sure hope that your target markets are using this platform. Otherwise you are drawn because of what's in the news or whatever to that platform, but it's not really the right one for you. Now in the LinkedIn lecture, I talk a lot about information being the new currency, but really from the idea of extract information from LinkedIn by having such an enormous pool uh, of influence. That's a three level deep pool of contacts. By the way, I have about 11,000 connections on LinkedIn. Oh yeah. Yeah. It sounds so great. Right. Right. Well, public speaker, not that difficult for me, but those 11,000 connections, three levels out, that gives John a pool of 21 million people that I can influence. So every time I share something, I'm thinking a little bit, a little bit about those 11,000 people, but those 11,000 people know who John is. <laughs> I'm thinking mostly about the 21 million people who I desperately think need to know who John is. You've got to become the content guru of you. So you can use this to either reframe or reclaim or refresh any parts of your background. You're going to have to think about what you want as the goal. Now, content is king here and content has to be visual. It's 60 to 90 days to a new you. And branding your career, and, and as an example here, I'm showing you LinkedIn, but of course, you know, that upchuck one is about to come up next, and that is Twitter. Oh, there was the lunch again. <laughs> um, you notice how the two profiles work together, look similar, but other than the headshot, they're not, they're not identical. They're a little bit different from one another. But imagine whatever content you're going to flow across these platforms. Now I'm flowing content across these platforms on normal shares that are all about what I do. So yeah, and I'm a public speaker, I'm in a lot of these. By the way, you do not have to be in what you share. That's an extra special thing that you can do if, if you have those uh, pictures and capabilities. But really it's about thinking about what the effect is over time of people seeing this over and over and over. And they're not speaking to you, but they're seeing this and it has a tremendous residual effect. Uh, so don't forget to showcase all of who you are, including some photos you may not <laughs> even like, like that last one. We are this product. We can't shy away from that. Do we want to be the, the store brand product? You know, that's the one where the, the packaging's a little bit off, the coloring of the packaging's a little bit off, the, the taste of the product, a little bit off. It's similar, a little bit off. Price, oh, price is very good. I like that price. But but ugh, much rather be that national brand with the, the right coloring, the right taste, the right everything. Uh, right perception. 
Which product do you want to be? So think about what we do better. That will help guide you as to what you might want to share. But let's think about that for a second. Most of what the average or typical job seeker would share is, is really about what's going on in their field. Imagine you actually lived and breathed your profession, paid or unpaid, doesn't really matter. By the way, passion does not require payment. By the way, there's, there's no payment here today. Lots of passion doesn't require payment. So to learn how to live and breathe your profession, but really it's the same thing as really letting them look over your shoulder to see what you're reading, doing, sharing, attending, what is drawing your interest. And if you're living and breathing your profession, it better be all about the players in your field, the challenges in your field, what's going on in your field. It's like, Oh my gosh, John has his finger on the pulse. Absolutely. <laughs> Whether someone's paying you or not. So, we might want to think about those elements, but also think about why you're going to be a standout in your field or why you may become a standout in your field. And I hate, hate to be the bearer of some harsh news, but uh, let's just be clear. 8, 10, 12 years, 15 years, whatever it might be in the same role does not make you an expert, except in your mind. <laughs> you become an expert at doing it one way. And what's the likelihood that you learn the, the one right way to do it? Very tiny, very tiny. So... Uh, long time in the role is not a good thing. That's an obstacle you're going to have to overcome. So just going after that doesn't, doesn't work. You have to think about all the things that you may have learned at every stage of your career, even though you might've done very different and, and maybe even less interesting things way back then. All of it becomes who you are today. So start with this understanding of what, either why you are or will be the standout. Next, we have to think about and problem solve about what we would like to do because, you know, the world has changed and adaptability of new ideas, new energy can get you into a lot of different roles that you may not have seemed to have had access before. So we have to go back and think about, well, how do we want to be perceived? How do we want them to see us? Well, what qualities do you have? Uh, uh, what makes you tick? What drives you? By the way, that, that what makes you tick and what drives you? Could have something to do with your work life, could have nothing to do with your work life. Um, what drives me beyond, you know, my passion for job search and everything else is, well, in my off times, just like I'll be doing tomorrow, I'll be, tomorrow I'll be up in the Catskills, uh, uh, hiking and climbing in the mountains and swimming in streams and doing all sorts of outdoor fun stuff, which I don't get to do in my work life. Oh, that drives me as well as, as my passion for what I do. So the what makes you tick is really important so people can relate to you. Maybe take a look at where your passion's focus. Well, my passion for outdoor, that's not gonna do too much for what I do now, but um, if your passion is very close, what I discovered in my, my time recruiting and then my time as the national trainer across 100 office recruiting system and my time as a VP over all of that was the part I loved most, my passion <laughs> was the teaching. Not actually the recruiter on the desk. You know why? Because it's, no, 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 how'd you get my number? Take me off your list, I hate you people all day long. <laughs> I'm actually shy and introverted, no matter what you see on screen here. Uh, and I'm the same way in front of an audience, just what you see on screen here. But that's having the power of, of being an expert in your field, giving you the confidence to own what you bring to the table. That doesn't change the core qualities of what of who you are. So so think about the passion, think about you, what you love to do and, and look up see if that's close to what you might be able to get involved in. So I can't do outdoors, but I can do this and I can work with clients, which is another string of my passion. So think about all the ways that you want them to visualize you, but especially as the future or potential future for their organization, small changes change everything. Now, as I talk a lot in the LinkedIn lecture, but I haven't mentioned it here today, not okay just to be cookie cutter interchangeable. Oh, I want to be perfect. Perfect. I'll be the little gingerbread. They'll just stamp me out. I'll be perfect. Well, that's great. Except if I choose you, I'm going to pay you less. <laughs> you don't want less? Well, I'll take the one on the left, take the one on the right. You're all interchangeable to me. I'm paying less. So you have to somehow be this interchangeable. That's the capable, qualified, wouldn't consider you without it. But you also have to somehow step out of line, be exceptional, be different. And that's part of what we're after with this chessboard of what we're going to share. So begin to think about what you could share that would make people think of you in a different way. Maybe to, to get there, we have to go back to how people judge us. So 
how do people judge what we bring to the table? Uh, or another way to ask that is what should I share? <laughs> because they're going to judge you from those shares. So if we begin to split hairs a little bit, you know, projects that we work on or projects that we initiate or, or projects that we develop, absolutely. We're splitting that hair in every possible way that we could get a little bit of credit. And we have to think about all the ways we could talk about that story. Results of the project or the level of those accomplishments, educational background, everything else. Most of us though are gonna be sharing books, articles, white papers, uh, those types of things that somehow talk about the players in the industry, the challenge within the industry, my role within the industry. Uh, and that gives you an opportunity as an expert to share just four, five, six words of opinion. Oh, what a great take on best practices for exactly what I do with a link. I'm not sure I agree with best practices for exactly what I do with a link. I could not disagree more with best practices for exactly what I do with a link. And you begin to see the power no matter which angle you take. If you fail to include an opinion, there's almost no effect on you. The residual effect comes from that four, five, six words of opinion. And then you let you share that thing out to LinkedIn and Twitter, which is a simple toggle choice even on the free version. I only use the free version of LinkedIn. And you let it flow across the network on LinkedIn, which is a three-level network, and you let it flow out to Twitter. Remember, adaptability is going to get you higher these days. New ideas, lack of fear is going to get you higher these days. So you want to create enough synergy in all of your story, enough excitement that it really is all connected across the resume, LinkedIn, your outreach messaging, even how you speak about yourself. That's part of your brand management, even, even what comes out of our mouth. Then we're going to open Pandora's box of our dreams and we're going to begin this endless self-marketing promotion across the different platforms that we choose. In terms of brand management, uh, you have to know yourself. You have to be authentic. I certainly hope that I'm considered authentic here today. Now, I confessed a few moments ago I'm shy and introverted. So <laughs> am I not being authentic because I don't show you that? Oh, that's true. I'm shy. <laughs> okay. Well, why do I have to show you that? I, I I've been effectively hiding that part for a very long time and using technique to get past it, actually become an expert in my field. So this is authentic and this has integrity and this is genuine as well because we're multifaceted human beings. This is not confessional. Show them whatever facet of you is the right facet. That's part of it. Now, to do this, I might have to go back and do a, a personal inventory. Uh, hopefully you did this in reinventing your resume or check out the resume renovation lecture or your LinkedIn. Check out the Building Your Professional Network with LinkedIn lecture. But really, the whole goal is to go back and find, discover, rediscover all the pieces of your story that you have forgotten over time or let fall by the wayside or you, or you tossed it away going, oh, that's a turd, get it off my jacket. Uh, that little turd could be a nugget of gold in the larger storytelling, but you're emotionally connected to it in a way that makes it look, oh, oh, oh I don't want that, don't want that. Well, maybe you need someone with perspective to work with you. By the way, it's so difficult for individuals to do this because you took this journey. You took this journey yourself. You lived this journey. You're so emotionally close to it. You don't have the separation to see how to artfully put together the pieces of background in a masterful way. And maybe even that darn internship from 20, 30 years ago has a place on the resume because together with the rest of the story, it's the... <gasps> Well, of course, no wonder you rose to these heights looking at the origin of the story. We get so wrapped up in the way we look at it, we forget. So think about all the different ways uh, that you can go back and discover your content. And then you have to filter it all because there's way too much of it. You have to filter it all through this singular question. Why is it going to be the very, very best business decision they make today if they choose to hire you? If you answer that question with what you share, my gosh, don't they really want to hire you? So. In terms of resume or LinkedIn itself, I hope that your story focuses on performance, how you contributed, how you changed the team, the company, or whatever it might be, because that's why they're going to want to hire you again. Um, also, as you share those things, understand you're also satisfying the only two reasons you ever get hired, assuming you're capable or qualified. We, By the way, we do not hire you because you're capable or qualified. It may seem like it, may seem like it wouldn't hire anyone that I didn't perceive to be capable or qualified, but that's not the deciding piece. It's why are you interesting? What makes you tick? 
How can I work with you during stressful weeks? Uh, how can I uh, how can I relate to you? And that's that's on the more personal side. So begin to think about how you're going to answer all these questions with what you either put in your materials, your resume, LinkedIn, or what you share in the share process. Now, LinkedIn, because we're going to use that as the primary share platform, as I said earlier, de facto social networking website for our work life, really very much like Facebook, uh, but but this one's for career. It's also these things here. Any business person will think of LinkedIn as, as this communications, research, marketing, advertising platform. But you saw that little video I played at the beginning. You have a career brand to manage forevermore. So you have to think of LinkedIn this way. And you have to think about every message that you put out there really is an advertisement to draw people back to you. So here's my real numbers from today. 11,906 direct connections. Three levels out, that is better than 21 million people. Social media marketing, your new way uh, to the job search. Well, yes, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. Some people are going to use Instagram. I certainly use Instagram. Uh, when you look at my Instagram, there's absolutely nothing about what I do professionally. <laughs> it's all about the other parts of John's life. Because, again, even if you're hiring a career coach or hiring someone to, to help you reinvent your resume or LinkedIn profile, that's a hiring or buy decision. It's the same chemistry and confidence. Besides knowing John is the expert, they want to know, oh, do I get him? Will I relate to him? And so what you see on my Instagram is me hiking up the Hudson Valley or, or me climbing Half Dome uh, out in Yosemite or or me almost almost dying in the desert, uh, in the California desert a year and a half ago, uh, making a wrong turn on a hike in at the end of August at 108 degrees, added two miles to the hike, all exposed in the sun and, and boy, almost did not make it out. Um, boy, that really reminds you to live every single day. So the, the whole point here is to get them to think about your LinkedIn profile, get them on this sales brochure. Hopefully you've done the right things and you're up to 501 connections. So they, when you do lure them onto your sales brochure, that's the profile, they suddenly see you as this mover and shaker. I hope you've also made your profile uh, visible and visual with what you put there. Now, this little white box called the activity box, now yours probably isn't square if you've not been sharing. It's just going to be a little blank, a little line going, here's what Jack, Jim, or Jill have been up to in the last 90 days. Nothing. <laughs> and that's most people. But when you begin to share, five or six things, four, five, six things are all populated to this box, and your profile becomes visual. This is how they look over your shoulder to see what you're reading, doing, sharing, attending. What is drawing your focus? So be sure to put things in there that are going to open doors to you. Now, in terms of how we manage perception, perception is reality. That is very disappointing. <laughs> Boy, I grew up, I grew up uh, in, in the 1970s out in Arizona uh, before the internet connected all the crazy folks out there. Um, it was a wonderful place to grow up in the 1970s. I did not detect any of what you hear now about Arizona. Um, so I'm glad for my time there. Um, and growing up, boy, this was the dirtiest, nastiest concept I ever heard. Perceptions reality. What, what do you mean perceptions reality? Grew up in small business. My folks had small business, you know, uh, 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 souvenir stores, t-shirts, moccasins, back scratchers, <laughs> five-time markup. Thanks, mom and dad got us through school. Okay. Uh, you know what you learn in small business is, is perceptions reality, hard work. What, what, you, what you build is your reality. You're either going to make it or break it. The whole family's livelihood is on the line. But in the modern world, uh, if we don't understand, it's not good enough just to be good all by yourself over in the lonesome in the corner. Oh, they're going to keep watering you and keep you in a dark corner and, and just not disturb you because you're producing something. You have to manage the perception of what you bring to the table. Change reality simply by changing perception. Change perception by putting together a share plan. Now, creating a social media share plan is not very difficult. Let me walk you through the steps. It's, it's pretty simple. This is the screen with all the answers, by the way. So <laughs> grab a screenshot if you need to. You're going to build 25 to 30 content items. This is the two hours of homework, by the way. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to go to Google, which I don't really like. But in this case, I mean it. You're going to get better results. So I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to click the News tab, and I'm going to begin to put in some of the players from my industry, some of the concepts from my industry, some of the challenges from my industry, some of the roles from my industry. And what you're going to see is all sorts of articles, because you're under the news tab, that touch on those subjects. Now you begin to collect articles. And for books, I can do the same thing with 
Amazon or Barnes and Noble. Events, really every event happening in the next 90 days already has its own website, everything else they're already promoting it. So you wanna to begin to think about collecting a nice mix of things that say I am absorbed in my profession. <laughs> If a couple of those are really special, you want them to hit at a certain time, yeah, I might take those two or three special shares, put them on a calendar, editorial calendar, so I remember to share them on a certain date type thing. But most of it, I'm simply going to build a list, open up a text document. These individual items, articles, books, events, they all have a website. Grab the link. The link goes last. Put it in there. Grab the title. Oh my gosh, it's so nice they put a title there. You know what you do with the title? You put quotes around it so the brain can grab it. Grab the title, put quotes around it. Put it in front of the link. In front of that, you simply put four, five, six words of opinion. What a great take on. Best practices for exactly what I do with a link. You see how simple it is. If you created this list in two hours of homework of 25 to 30 items to share, you wake up in the morning, maybe you grab your first one of these, and you go, oh, well, Copy, paste, share. What was that? 10, 15 seconds? Mid-morning second coffee? Copy, paste, share. Time for lunch? Copy, paste, share. Maybe I'm a coffee hound, mid-afternoon coffee. And I go, oh, copy, paste, share. End of the day, copy, paste, share. Four, five, six times a day, like breathing two total minutes out of the day. Wherever I stop on that list tomorrow, I continue down the list. I continue down the list till I get to the bottom. And I go right back to the top. And just like a little gerbil going around on a wheel, I go round and round and around this list for six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks. No one statistically is going to see a repeat in that amount of time with that many shares. So think about how you're going to push message. Select these shares all to illustrate certain things about you. There's a lot of the secret as well. Now... Projects we work on, yep, projects we initiate, projects we develop. You have to think about all the different angles of your involvement to these different things. Um, a lot of it goes into uh, fixing our branding. Uh, of course, you're going to have to fix what comes out of our mouth as well. But you have to think like a storyteller. Now, by the way, a storyteller often makes things up. You can't make things up. It has to be real. All I'm saying here is I can tell you the same story in a very dull <sighs> way that's not very interesting. <laughs> or I could tell you in a very cat. Oh my gosh, that was so interesting. You know, when the CEO reached out to me and, and I picked up the phone, oh my gosh, put them in your shoes, looking out of your eyes in the moment as a storyteller, boom, they fall in love with what they're hearing. If you tell them the right things, your job is to set the stage, create the atmosphere. Where's the lighting? Where's the costume? Where's everything else? By the way, right before this lecture, I was out doing some cardio. So I'm in just some uh, light athletic gear. If I came on to give this lecture in some light athletic gear, I don't think you'd listen to me. You have to look the part. So absolutely, as much as I don't want to put the suit on, absolutely right here. Here it is. And of course, speak to them, whoever you're talking to, speak to them like they're a dear old friend of yours. You haven't seen them in five years. Very warm, engaging. This is all about the nuance in how you nudge people. Gentle, little figurative ways of coaxing attention. So... Here's a few of my shares as an example. Yep, most of them are all about what I do. So uh, they're right for me. It wouldn't be right for a normal job seeker. Uh, here, up here on the left, was the first time I was at, up at stage right next to the Reverend Jesse Jackson at Rainbow Push Wall Street Project. By the way, good and bad happens in life all at the same time. That was somebody knocking at the door and suddenly I'm like, oh, oh what's this? What's this? I have to take a look. Uh, um, you know what? That's the same week that my father was passing away in hospice. So on the weekends, I'm flying down to Florida to, to see my dad, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to do this, and, and I'm glad that little picture there is so small because now I, was, I had about two and a half hours sleep that day and was very stressed out given everything going on, but opportunity is knocking. Are you going to be ready or not? And by the way, even though I was stressed out and everything else, I was ready. There were five career coaches, and, and we each got 11 minutes or 12 minutes to present. I'm like, oh, so generous. <laughs> uh, what will I do? I'm like, I know what I'll do. And I gave an 11, 12 minute motivational pitch. I'm like, I know how to go evangelical on this audience. My dad was a Catholic deacon. I've heard enough of that. And, and I'm like, oh, that's the energy this audience needs. And they need the right motivating message. And I had about 40 slides flying behind me, not quite the way they work today, flying behind me just to support as I gave the motivational pitch on two and a half hours sleep. And I got the very first question and I got 30 to 35% of all of the questions. And I was the only non-African-American, and it was only male on stage. 
uh, as a career coach. And, and so you have to think about that. So I shared that. Over on the right, I'm, I radio show host called me during the busiest month of the year, February, and, and said, oh, you're going to the, the keynote at, at Google for Social Media Week? I'm like, absolutely. When is it? When is it? Friday, 8 o'clock in the morning? Oh, great. I'll see you there. Huh. <laughs> Another day I had about two and a half hours sleep. I got there, and, and then the radio show host didn't show up. Of course, those articles you see there aren't very uplifting, but it's right for what I share. Uh, here I am up at WHGR Voice of Harlem Radio, and I shared that. Or top right really has nothing to do with what I do, but it shows good character, good works. I'm up there uh, volunteering to go talk to lawmakers up in Albany about funding for the library. By the way, John does not get funding from the library, so I'm not trying to get funding so John gets funding. This is simply to get funding for the library. Good works, of course, getting highlighted in AM New York, all that kind of stuff is fun. And then uh, broke the broke the record at the library for a regularly attended lecture. I'm very competitive, no matter how shy. Uh, so I like that stuff. And then I get this call going, oh, you're in Essence Magazine. I'm, who is this? I think I'm getting punked, but I should go look. What if I'm there? And, and, and you know, it was a little hard to find because Barack was on the cover, but I got it. And oh my gosh, there is my book right there, highlighted in the magazine. You see this shorter gal here in the picture? She happened to be outside of the library uh, after one of my lectures. And, and when I do these in person at the library, yes, once they kick us out the door, I tend to be on the sidewalk answering questions until they're all answered. And she simply said, oh, I'm, I'm blogging about my job search for Essence Magazine. I'm like, oh my gosh, you should have my book. <laughs> I understand how things work. Didn't, didn't ask anything for it. And, and my gosh, yeah, there she is talking to some other career coach, but that is my book on the list. So you want to think about how you open doors and how you move away from things becoming transactional. So whatever it is that can open a door um, can help you. I, I was helping a producer who was a TV producer uh, who was a little mature in her field. And, you know, well, that's a field that really likes young ones. I get it. I get it. But, you know, you need some experience, too. And, and uh, boy, I helped this person navigate their, their way into a really great job at a point where they thought, oh, maybe it's past me. I'm like, no, no, it's not past you. Let's go get it. And, gosh, didn't they turn around and introduce me to others? Think about how you're going to get what you're after. This is an influence uh, you know, tidal wave, essentially, that you're sending out these ripples in what you share. So here's a few more shares to inspire you doing a group shot at one of my events or, or uh, doing something for Grace Institute. Love that organization. Um, everything that you share becomes part of the larger narrative, becomes part of how people think of you. And you want to think about what you're going to share. Don't be distracted by the fact that I'm in most of these because I'm sharing my own content most of the time. Think about uh, how you illustrate your certain skills. Oh, I just finished a project and some project that's sellable, or maybe you're selected to lead a new initiative on digital content development, or maybe you're a member of a, of a co divisional cost containment and reduction committee. Well, you won't be very popular, but it's certainly a needed function. Or maybe you're reading Social Media Marketing, An Hour a Day by Dave Evans. What a great book. It's a book I'll endorse, and there's not too many I'll endorse. Uh, developing a new project on things that will showcase your skill or, or, or breadth of experience, or, or maybe you're attending a lecture series on, on social media marketing. Forget workforce development. Social media marketing, you don't have to mention it was about job search. It's very, very important. Nudge, nudge, nudge. Figurative little coaxes to draw attention. Small changes change perception dramatically. By the way, sharing accolades can share the light, shed the light on you as well. You have to understand the concept of how you might praise someone, how the moonlight reflects back to you. Oh, congratulations, Dave. <laughs> I see you're reading Social Media Marketing, An Hour a Day by Dave Evans. What a great book. Really got me up to speed. There we go. Yeah, in terms of being a leader, you know, the easiest way to be seen a leader is simply to be a leader. Then take your credit for it. Not, not a secret I'm working for myself and directly with clients at this point, but there are many times in my life that I work for other people. You know what I did not allow myself to do? I did not allow myself to be limited by a ridiculous eight and a half by 11 sheet of job description. That's a starter idea. You you hired me for the brain power. Um, look out because that's, that's the magic you're going to get. So there was one point in my career where I was being promoted every four to five months. And that is great on the financial side, certainly very stressful on the delivery side. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I fooling these people? 
No, I just kept putting one more plate, one more plate, one more thing on my plate until they're like, wow, it's amazing. What if we just boost John up to the next level, see what he can do? Be a leader rather than waiting for someone to give you things. So is there a problem that needs to be solved or something that has to be rethought or, or something that has to be invented? It's your job to imagine that it's your money invested. How would you do your job if it was your money invested? Well, you can understand the way I approach jobs because of growing up in small business. It's all on the line. So just in conclusion to this part, understand that every piece of messaging about you, not just these shares, but all communication become part of, of it. And that includes right down to your signature block. Now, if you were in today, yesterday's lecture, I mentioned I would go over this today. Your signature block can, can do a lot of marketing about your value for you. If you open up an email to send someone a new email, is it blank? You don't have a signature block. I don't care if that's desktop, tablet, uh, 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 mobile, none of it matters. Doesn't even matter who makes it. Every single one of those devices takes a signature block. So at the bare minimum, best John, John Krant. Here's my phone number. Here's my email. What, what? I have to put my email in my email? No, no. <laughs> for you, I'll hit the special key. I'll toggle a little copy just for you. Yes, this is attention to detail. This is a demonstration of how you will handle follow-up when you're actually working there. Hopefully you close your signature block with something motivating that gets them over to your full sales brochure. Connect with me on LinkedIn at, there's the address line. Goes out with every personal, every business email you ever send again. Now here's my ridiculously long email signature. I grew up Catholic, you know, so much guilt. And my gosh, first time I wrote this out, I'm like, oh, what would my mother say? Wow, John, looks like you made it. Uh, okay, we have to give ourselves permission to get past the modesty and humility, which are really great traits for all the rest of our life, but not in job search, not for career. So even the simplest iteration, you can put something together like this that has your basic information here. Now, I wrote this one a long time ago, so hopefully it won't say view my LinkedIn profile. Motivate them, connect with me on LinkedIn at. Couple, other, couple different examples there. So signature block, a very, very important piece understanding all that you share in every conversation that you're in, you're trying to get them to visualize you this way. So they see you as the person that they just must speak to. I have to speak with that person. I can't not include that person in the interview discussion. Take your first step wherever you are in this process. Uh, understand it's two hours of homework to sit down and do the Google News search. Go look at the books. Look up where events are happening for your industry. Collect that all together. Write out the simple marketing message. They're all ready to go. And then you can really execute a social media marketing plan in just two minutes per day. That's career evolution, preparing for your career's next leap with social media marketing. If you have not seen my LinkedIn lecture, that one you really need to see in conjunction with this one. So Go back and see that one. You can see it on my YouTube channel, Self Recruiter, my Facebook page, which I believe is under John Krant, and uh, also uh, right over on my Self Recruiter website, halfway down the page. That's a special version where you can see me large or see the slides large. That's the one that's really a great start and stop tutorial. Thank you guys for joining in today. I will be back next Tuesday uh, at, uh, let's see, that is a 4 p.m. lecture. I don't have the topic in front of me, but it's all over my website, selfrecruiter.com, under the calendar page. And I'll be back again next Wednesday at 12 noon. If you need help, don't hesitate to visit my website, selfrecruiter.com. Check out the services uh, tab. has all my packages under it. And if you need to chat before we know which package is the right one for you, just send me a quick email. That's a direct email <laughs> by email. And my email is plastered everywhere. So just reach out. We can set up a time to talk. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lecture. Thank you guys for joining in today.